500 cars line up on the start and finish straight and we are racing as the green lights go or switch I should say and it's a fabulous start from Tashiki Oyu he gets down into turn one ahead of fellow front row sitter Kenta Yamashita it's pretty much line astern in GT500 very civilized down into turn one what's happening further back not much there was one or two changes of position but we're looking now at the GT300 field how well will they be behaving as there is a lead change the Toyota's challenging or you get to Yamashita's through as the green flag waves in GT300. The Prius will lead down into turn one, but we've got a lead change at the head of the field as Kenta Yamashita has passed to Shiki Oyu. And on the split screen here, we can see plenty of action as both sets of cars head in their representative starts down through the first couple of corners it is uh, Nakayama who continues to lead Yamauchi but Yamauchi getting very racy in the Subaru and this is what we saw in GT500 but uh, Yuki Nakayama's managed to keep Hideki Yamauchi behind and that Prius the hybrid Prius continues to lead in GT300 it's impossible to watch both screens Jamie what's going on in GT500 yeah, as, you, as you spotted it, it was uh, Yamashita going to the lead in the number 14 toy to the world to get the penalty. So perhaps all you didn't fight that one too hard. It's the two, if we exclude the 14 car that has the penalty, it's the two Dunlop cars, 16 from 64th, and then the number 8 Arta car. And, the, and Ronnie Quintarelli is still running fifth. But Heike Kovalainen's made up two positions into sixth place in the Saad car. Looks like Fenestraz has dropped one. Bertrand Baguette has dropped two positions now to ninth place behind a relatively fast starting 38 ceremony toy. But remember, that's also got a penalty hanging over it. The top eight in class had not changed position in GT300 but they're starting to close back up again and that just must seem like an eternity look clean air ahead of Kenta Yamashita you well, could argue there it is. Right. you could so argue in. Jamie that there's an advantage if the longer you stay out the more elongated the field gets the greater your advantage yeah it's very true you've seen the 37 did come in there so now I'm watching for the 38 uh, getting its penalty. Uh, we saw just a moment ago Bertrand again was looking like he was coming back towards the cars ahead of him. It was, uh, it was in fact, the, the, the two cars ahead of him were the ones that will be getting out of his way anyway. The 38 car now has its instructions come in, so it's a case of doing them one at a time. Isn't it great to see Sasha for Nestle's back, by the way? Well, here's that move. Oh, well, it's Bertrand Baguette getting past the Zen machine, and there's a little bit of contact there isn't there so uh, yeah Yuji Takagawa not yielding or not seeing Bertrand again but either way they came together and now there is Tashikawa all over the back of Kovalainen and he goes to the outside in turn one Kovalainen's not making it too difficult but he's trying to hang around on the inside Tashikawa is going to have to drive and Kovalainen loses out there. So Kovalainen having made a good start just started to filter back. He was really the, the disappointment in qualifying. He wouldn't have been pleased with his lap, would he? Well, that's a big crash as we move away from the GT 500 battle that is a big big incident there and that down at turn six I think has hit the barriers on the inside let's have a look at what has happened here you're going to see it on the right hand side it arrives at speed a huge amount of speed there it's the 22 machine so that is the RQ's AMG GT3 machine that missed the last race at Sugo and is back this weekend, but they might have hoped that they weren't. Let's hope that 
Hisashi Wada is okay in that machine. That's a hefty incident. You can see the detritus on the circuit, the debris, and how far that car has gone. So full course yellow essentially neutralizes the field. Super GT trialing this system in 2021, of course, with some success. It's a system that I like. It allows those that have worked hard on building an advantage to keep that advantage. It'll be interesting to see who can get the heat in their tyres. Will it be the Dunlop, Bridgestone or Michelin shot machines? Three different tyre manufacturers in the top four now and two different car manufacturers. So we've got Honda, one, two and three, leading the Nissan. The Toyotas have exited stage left, courtesy of their engine change penalties. And Toshiki Oyu leads the field to green now as the cars snake and weave down the start and finish straight to get that core tyre temperature as they head down to turn one. And as we've seen so far in this race, everybody fairly well behaved. The only bit of bumping and boring we've seen is Tashikawa and Bertrand Baguette in GT500. As the GT300 field meanders their way down to turn one under green flag conditions. They're being very well behaved as well. The second Yuchi served his penalty. Oh, what's happened here? There's a, there's a wheel that's come off a car. I've had, to keep my, I've had to keep my mouth shut up oh. until now, but it is the number 16. It's the race leader, Toshi Oyo, has lost his right rear wheel. I, can't I saw that a moment ago on the local monitors, and I had to bite my tongue <laughs> until it appeared on, on, on these pictures. But I that thought is you an got absolute, <laughs> an absolute disaster for the moving team that just cannot catch a break. Unbelievable. That has to be a hub failure or something that's failed in that wheel because I've never seen anything like that I mean fair dues after a pit stop where the wheels not on properly but at this stage in the race I, I can't remember seeing anything quite like that and that has just Incredible, isn't it I mean that could have been very dangerous indeed but that wheel yeah hitting the barrier with some force there because it yeah. bounced back into the, the, the track luckily I think uh, <laughs> to rest without causing too many issues. Uh, his second Gucci. Oh, now we've got further drama in GT300. So that is another big hit. That's Yoshida. Should see a replay on your screen just about now. So Uchida goes for the attack on Walkinshaw, who's dead for the race. He was expecting to struggle, and so it seems to be proving. But uh, watch as they come out of this corner. We're going to see Uchida move left on Walkinshaw before he's cleared the Lexus, and there is the contact. And it's so going to be unnecessary. a big impact with that unprotected guardrail. Ish. So unnecessary to move left because it was yeah, a good move. Was it, the... was, it was a very late move. The, the car guy. Is that the. Yeah, the that's uh, the, the car guy Ferrari was caught yeah. up in that as well. Takeshi Kimura at the wheel. I think, yeah, I, I, I would, I would think more. It's going to be tyre-related worries than, point. than fuel. Also through only hiking cover line and coming through. So it was the fact that the pit lane was shut that the big issue. That was the big issue. So pit lane shut. Cars couldn't. And look at this three wide. And that is brave stuff. That was very close to an accident there. Katsumasa Chio involved in that. Here comes the Model O machine, the lead car. Have they stayed out too long, too late, or have they built out enough of a lead to cover off the pace differential when they get out? And that's the battle to watch. We'll see the bright orange ART8 car coming along the pit straight. There it is, coming around the last corner now. So this will give us a really good indication we're going to lose out but just by how much because obviously he's going to have no pace in turn one here at all 
and you can just see the differences. Nice yeah, but it's it, it's not even a contest, is it? There's just nothing you can do. And now the number eight car has got the lead. They just needed a, a clean race, and I think okay, we're not even halfway, so plenty can still happen. But so far, they got through the pit stop phase. Um, Oh, and there's an investigation for the number one car. And I'm trying to decode the Japanese that's come up on the timing screen, but it's to do with the pit out. I think there's been a pit lane infraction for the number one car, at least they're under investigation. This could be big news for the championship, that that car is running a net third. Now Yamamoto pressuring Nakayama for second place. They both cleared the 64 car, which is still getting its tires up to temperature battle there right in front of your eyes but the number one car is under investigation for a pit lane infraction gt300 race leader in this car has had it all its own way so far in gt300 because there is a, a number 10 as well which is a bit more of a junior pairing although kaz hoshino is retiring what's happened here that's red sato who was in the walls in practice wasn't he? now Spun there up well, he's at turn 11. I, I would like to see some of the, the two incidents that were flagged on the timing screen, but I think he's been in the wars all throughout the stint because he had the contact with the Lambo, the 87 Lambo. There's your race leader, Koki Saga, in the Toyota Prius in GT300. There's your race leader in GT500, and they've given the TV director an early Christmas present by making sure they're in the same picture as they cross the line here in Autopolis. It's Arta who will win here this sixth round and just behind the GT300, it's Koki Saga who will take the chequered flag in the Toyota Prius. Those two dominant in class, there's been battles further back, but let's not underestimate how dominant that NSX and that Toyota Prius have been here at Autopolis. A race that got off to a slow start. Plenty of bumping and boring at the beginning of two safety cars. But we've had a clean second stint. And we've seen plenty of racing. Nakayama's going to hold on from Naoki Yamamoto. They've come home with a good amount of points in that bag compared to their championship rivals but all the Bordics have to go to Arta, Nidai Fukuzumi and Tomoki Nijiri they'll be super pleased with their day's work and for Koki Saga and Nakayama there they will likewise be pleased with their weekend because that Toyota Prius is back at the races.